A while ago, I made a video about how to deal the most possible damage in a single attack in Pokemon. And ever since then, people have been asking me to do the opposite. Well, I'm a man of the people, so sure. Today, let's try and find the least possible damage you can deal in a single attack in Pokemon. It's zero. Alright, 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 fine, cool your jets, cool your jets, I'll do it for real. Obviously, if you use an attack that doesn't deal any damage, like Splash or something, you'll deal zero damage. Pretty hard to get any lower than that, unless, of course, you count healing as dealing negative damage, in which case, if you had a Blissey on 1 HP using Rest, it would deal a maximum of negative 713 points of damage to itself, but I get it, that's not what you meant. You could make the argument that if you deal zero damage, then you didn't deal any damage at all, and therefore that isn't a valid answer to the question. Alright, alright, fair enough. In that case, what is the lowest amount of damage you could deal in a single attack that's greater than zero? Now that seems like a much more interesting question, so let's break it down. It's one because of this funny little thing called rounding. The game doesn't have fractions of hit points, so it just rounds any damage up, meaning that any damage you deal that's less than one, be it 0.9 or 0 0.00009, it just gets rounded up to one. There's no getting around it. The least damage you can possibly deal in the game without being zero is one. All right, all right, all right. Hey, hey, who threw that? Still not happy? You want me to throw rounding out the window? You, you know what? You know what? Fine. Today, I find the lowest possible non-zero damage you can deal in a single attack in Pokemon in a hypothetical world where the game doesn't round because it definitely does. Richard, hit that intro. All right, so if you look up this question online, you'll probably find something about a shuckle using constrict on an aggron, which can get you in the ballpark of 0 0.05 points of damage. Now, that's all well and good. 0 0.05 is pretty respectable, or, or I guess not respectable at all, <laughs> but we can get a lot lower. To understand why, we need to look at the math. This is the damage formula that Pokemon games have been using from generation 5 onwards. Now, I know it looks scary, and from personal experience, it's super annoying to put on screen in its entirety. So, to simplify things a bit, let's break it down. All this over here with all the PEMDAS shenanigans going on, that's where all these statistics, base power, all those things go. So we're just gonna lump all this together and call it stats. And then all this stuff tacked on at the end is just a bunch of other multipliers and things like that. So we're going to call all this stuff. So damage is really just stats times stuff. <laughs> See? Math is easy. When most people try to tackle this problem, they tend to focus mostly on the stats section, getting things like power and attack as low as possible, and then they pile on as much stuff as they can. That's where the Shuckle combo comes from. Shuckle has super low attack, Constrict is the lowest base power move in the game, and Aggron has super high defenses. However, there is a problem with this line of thinking, and that's this little dude right here. This little cheeky, little cheeky man, this little wise guy, this plus two right at the end. No matter how low you get the rest of this, if your base power and attack were literally zero, then the lowest stats could possibly be is two. Stuff, on the other hand, is just a bunch of things multiplied together. It can get just about as low as we want. So, in reality, the best way to approach this problem is to start with the stuff, get as much of this involved as we can, and then see how low we can make the stats. So with that goal in mind, let's go through all of our stuff to see what we're working with here. In the order that Bulbapedia has it listed in, which honestly seems super random to me, but whatever, we have targets. If a move hits more than one Pokemon at once in a double battle or something, it does three-fourths as much damage. 
PB is for Parental Bond, an ability that lets your attack hit twice, but the second one deals half as much damage. However, while the second hit deals half as much damage, the whole attack winds up dealing 1.5 times more damage than normal. So this is actually a buff, we can lose it. Weather is, well, it's basically just the plot of Generation 3 summed up into one variable. If you use a water attack in the sun or a fire attack in the rain, it does half as much damage. This one's, this one's actually pretty good. We're definitely going to want to use it. If a move is a critical hit, it deals more damage, so obviously here, we're gonna assume that it isn't one. Get out of here! Random is a little peek behind the curtain. Whenever you attack, the game generates a random number between 85 and 100, then divides that by 100 to get a multiplier, just to prank all those kids trying their first Nuzlocke who were so sure their Starly was gonna survive, and honestly, fair play. The lowest this can possibly be is 0.85, so for our calculations, we're going to assume that you got a low roll and just set this equal to 0.85. Stab, you get a boost in damage whenever you use a move that's the same type as you, so we got to avoid this like the plague. Type is for your resistances, so in our case, if a Pokemon is attacked by a move and both of their typings resist it, then it would do a quarter as much damage. This one here is the real piece de resistance, so we're definitely going to want to keep it in mind. Get it? Get, get it? get it? Resistance? Because it has to do with resistances? Oh, come on, come on, it wasn't that bad. Richard? Richard, if you throw one more tomato at me, then so help me God. If you're burned, your physical attacks deal half as much damage. Hell yeah, let's turn up the heat. Let's just always assume that our Pokemon is burned. These last couple of ones have to do with whatever the gimmick of the game you're playing is. And then finally, we have the very helpful variable of other, which is just, it's just everything else. Mostly abilities and items and stuff that Bulbapedia couldn't be bothered to list out. Why do abilities like multi-scale get lumped into other, but parental bond gets to join the cool table with the other real variables? I don't know. Make it make sense, Bulbapedia. Oh, that's right. It's me, Chip the Ripped Tyson, wrestler extraordinaire. You may know that I have a long-standing rivalry with that wicked subscribe button, but to take it down for good, I need the help of the good people right here and- Insert the name of your hometown here. If you're enjoying the video, I need you to scroll down a bit, look for that red subscribe button, and give it the old finger poke of doom. So looking at this, our two biggest money losers are weather and type. So let's start there. If we use a water attack in the sun against a Pokemon who has two of these three typings, then weather is at 0.5 and type is at 0.25. Now that's pretty bad, but believe it or not, we can get it even lower. If we have a Pokemon use Forest Curse on a Water and Dragon type, then it would effectively become a triple type Water, Dragon, and Grass Pokemon, which just so happen to be the three types that resist water, meaning that it is down to 0.125. Now that is what I'm talking about. Looking at targets, unfortunately, most of the multi-target water attacks are pretty strong in power. Water Spout can get super low, but is also only usable by Kyogre, which is a very strong Pokemon, so, you know, we'll just set that aside for now and come back to it later. Targets is a 0.75 multiplier anyway, so it's not as important as some of the other stuff. And that just leaves Other. So, I guess it's about time we get a little more specific with it. Other lumps together all of these variables here. If multiple of these are at play at the same time, then the game multiplies them all together, and then for some coding reason, I presume, that I don't understand, multiplies it by 4096, and then divides it all by 4096 again? I mean, sure, why not? And that gives you your other variable. From this, we know that our target should be under a reflect, with the ability Multiscale and an ally with Friend Guard. And our Pokemon needs to have the ability Rivalry. Reflect halves the amount of all physical damage taken, approximately in double battles, it's actually by this fraction. 
Multiscale halves the damage you take if you're at full health, Friend Guard reduces the damage your allies take by 25%, and Rivalry makes it so you deal 75% of the damage to a Pokemon of a different gender than you. Okay, so with all of that as low as we can get it, let's move back over to the stats section and see what we can do. We're looking for a super weak water attack, preferably a multi-target one, that can be learned by a Pokemon with really bad attack targeting a water dragon type with high defense. <laughs> right off the bat, you'll notice that already Shuckle is out of contention. Hear that Shuckle? You already had the record for the most damage in a single attack. You're not getting this one too, you glory hog and bat. So our big choice here is what move to use. Do we go with Clamp? the lowest flat base power physical water move in the game, that's only single target, or water spout, which can get even lower in base power and is spread damage, but can only be learned by a Pokemon with high base stats and is special, so it isn't hindered by burn. Luckily, in the realm of math, we don't need to wonder or debate, we can just plug them both in and find out. So that's what I did, and the answer is neither. <laughs> there is one way to outgrime both of these options, but it's a little complicated, so stick with me. For this combo to work, we're gonna have to head over to the sandy shores of Alola because the weakest possible attack in the history of Pokemon isn't Constrict, nor is it Clamp or Water Spout, it's Hydro Vortex the water type Z move itself. Impossible, you say. Heresy, slander, look at that base power. 100 as a minimum? <laughs> yes, yes, I know, that is quite high. But while you were all busy playing checkers, fussing around with clamp versus poison sting versus constrict, I was playing Gloomhaven. It's a, it's, it's a board game, it's kind of like chess. It's actually, it's nothing like chess, really. But I kind of hate chess in it. Oh, come on, come on, it's not that fun. Oh, Richard, Richard, you put that tomato down. Eh, eh, Richard, Richard, I swear. Eh. Remember what I said at the top of the video. It's all about the stuff. You may have noticed that I sort of glossed over the gimmick variable earlier so that I could preserve this epic reveal, but what I neglected to mention is that if you use a Z move or a Dynamax move against a Pokemon that just use Protect, it does 0.25 times as much damage. Now you might be saying, sure, 0.25 is pretty good, but isn't a base 1 power water spout a lot better? Actually, no, it's not because this whole part is divided by 50, a change in base power is not nearly as significant as you might think. In reality, the way the math works out, all we need to do is make the difference between the attack and defense as big as possible, which is honestly super easy to do. If attack divided by defense is close enough to zero, then the increase in base power is practically negligible. Heck, with the right setup, you could use a base 1 power move and a base 10,000 power move, and the difference in damage would be nearly indistinguishable. Alright then, let's move on to the final step, choosing our Pokemon. The way Z moves work is that any attack with a normal base power of 55 or lower will now have a base power of 100 when Zified, which is as low as Z moves can go. So we need a non-water type Pokemon with very low attack that can learn a water type move base 55 power or lower. Interestingly, we actually have a couple of valid choices here. You see, because of the way the game rounds when calculating base stats, any Pokemon with a base attack of 44 or lower will wind up with an in-game attack of 4 at level 1 if you assume that all the Eevees and Ivies and stuff are 0 with a negative nature. So, while it may be some people's instinct to try and bend over backward to get a crappy water move on Chansey, in reality, anything Bulbasaur or weaker is going to work exactly the same. Interestingly, that also means that Shuckle wasn't even the only Pokemon that could pull off the Constrict combo from earlier. You could have used practically every basic Pokemon that can learn Constrict, so you ain't so special after all, Shuckle. Shuck with all that in mind, to make up for the fact that I completely forgot it existed the last time I talked about Pokemon damage, we're going with Smeargle. 
Its signature move, Sketch, allows it to learn every single move in the game, meaning that in addition to a weak water attack like Aqua Jet, we can also give it a move like Skill Swap to help us move abilities around the battlefield, which will be pretty important to actually pull this off. As for the defending Pokemon, Palkia is the water dragon type with the highest defense stat in the game. However, a few people on Reddit suggested using some reflect type and copycat shenanigans to get this typing onto a different Pokemon which has slightly higher defenses. And when I say slightly, I mean you need to go seven decimal places out to see the difference in the damage. Based on what I found, if you have a Florgis with the move copycat, which it can only get as an egg move, copy someone who just used reflect type on Palkia after it had already been hit by a forest curse, then Florgis will now have the water, dragon, and grass type. If someone then uses Wonder Room to swap the base defense and special defense stats of all the Pokemon on the field, it will give Florgis a base 154 defense. Sounds like a lot of work for practically no payoff. I mean, like, literally you would not notice, but sure. In the name of statistical accuracy, We'll make it work. So finally, with all the pieces laid out, it's time to calculate our answer and create the world's least intimidating Frankenstein's monster. If you wanna deal the least possible damage in Pokemon, here's what you're gonna need to do. It has to be generation seven and it needs to be in a double battle. A triple battle would have been preferable so that we could have two friend guards going, but unfortunately they weren't included in Gen 7, so a double battle is the best we can do. You need a Smeargle holding a Water Z Stone with the moves Aqua Jet, Skill Swap, and maybe Forest Curse and something that can lower its own attack, or you can have those on another Pokemon, it doesn't really matter. You'll also need a Pokemon with the move Reflect Type, which should not be on Smeargle, because remember, water typing is the plague for it. We gotta practice social distancing here. Your opponent needs a Palkia, someone with Reflect, someone with Friend Guard, and a Florgis with max EVs and IVs and a beneficial nature in special defense. Remember, we'll switch it later. There will also need to be Pokemon with the abilities Rivalry and Multiscale in play so that Smeargle can move them around, someone with Wonder Room, and someone capable of inflicting Smeargle with a burn. Though it really doesn't matter which side they're on, figure it out. After all that, if the situation is exactly right and you have a Smeargle at level 1 with 0 EVs and IVs in attack, a minus attack nature, which has acquired the ability Rivalry, had its attack lowered six times, and has been burned, use a Z-powered Aqua Jet on a Florgis at level 100, at full health of the opposite gender as the Smeargle, with max EVs and IVs and a beneficial nature in special defense, had its defense raised six times, has been given the ability Multiscale, has copycatted a Pokemon who just used Reflect type on a Palkia, who's had Forest Curse used on it, is under a Reflect, in a Wonder Room, has an ally with Friend Guard, and has used the Protect on the same turn that it was attacked, then roughly 6% of the time, if you get the lowest possible random roll, Florgis will receive a total of 0 0.00249293666 points of damage. Yes! Yes! Limited power! And there you have it the lowest possible damage you can deal in a single attack. So class, what did we learn today? No, no, no I'm seriously asking, what did we learn today? The game's just gonna round this up to one. I still don't understand what the po Richard! Oh.